tonight I finally get a chance to meet the man. The man, have a seat. Well, fellas, I'm sitting here with two guys, 23 gold gloves, 22 all-star appearances, multiple silver sluggers, and more to come, I'm sure. And I cannot believe you guys have worn a Cardinal uniform. This is the first time you guys have ever had a chance to meet each other. Yeah. Crazy, man. Crazy. That's why I'm happy he's here. Yeah, well, you know, it's, COVID has played a big part in that, uh, you know, because of the protocols and all of that. And uh, I really look forward to the opportunity to meet somebody um, that it's fun, it's fun for me to sit and watch a ball game. You know, to be very honest with you, for a while there, it, it wasn't, wasn't a lot of fun to watch. But he's come over, man, and I tell you what, it's, it's uh, a spark, it's got a new, I got a new spark, and it's, it's fun going to the ballpark every day, watching a pro do his thing every day. I appreciate that, thank you. Well, you know, he's old enough that you can actually say, I watched you as a kid growing up. So yeah. what, what did he mean to you when you had first put your eyes on Ozzy Smith? Well, you know, obviously, you know, I watch a lot of baseball and I love the game. And uh, as I got older, I really appreciate defense. You know, um, I got to give too low credit, man. Uh, you know, he said, you know, you could be a good hitter, but you better be able to play both sides of the ball. And so, you know, you always watch the best defenders in the game. And he's obviously, you know, probably the best to ever play defense. And, uh, you know, just watching and obviously talking to my dad, you know, my dad loves the game too. And we always talked about Ozzy, you know, he always talked about that play he made with the Padres where he dove left, mm -hmm. made it with his bare hand, you know, all those little things. and you know, moving around the bases the right way. And, uh, you know, you just appreciate a legend. And uh, I appreciate he's a fan of me, but uh, um, it's good to have guys like him around. Um, I think it's really important for the culture. Let's not forget, you know, where we came from. And honestly, when I see him walking around, I don't know how these young guys are, but I know that I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of business. You know, I ain't making errors in front of Ozzy. You know, I got to make sure I do things right. No, no, Mike, I had a chance to watch him take ground balls today. And it brought back so many wonderful memories because you can tell somebody who loves what it is they do, their craft, the way they go about it. And he certainly is one of those people that go about it the way that I went about it. I, I can tell that you, that's part, you enjoy it. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's fun and, and you get a lot out of it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I love taking ground balls. I love working on yeah. baseball stuff. You know, I love being in the gym, but I don't love it as much as I love hitting and I love taking ground balls. I really do enjoy it. Um, I don't see it as work or something that I have to go do. I see it as an opportunity to get better. And, uh, you know, I take pride in my work. You know, when I'm taking ground balls with everybody out there, I don't know about you, but I'm not making errors. If I'm, everyone, I'm gonna do everything I can. I wanna be able to end that ground ball session knowing that, hey, I made less errors than everybody else did today. You know, I don't know, that's just how I twist my mind a little bit, but sometimes when you take a lot of ground balls every day, it gets lethargic, you know, but I don't wanna create, that's how you create bad habits when you just think it's just another day. So I just try to compete with myself. You know, I, I used to watch him every day take ground balls from his knees and from different positions. Talk about both of you guys, if you will, the, the, the training process, the workouts as you went through your own personal drills, some of the drills maybe that you did that maybe he was doing 30 years before here. So I'll start with you. Yeah, well, I mean, like you said, I, I used to throw from my knees. I used to work, I do work on those throws, um, you know, and I always tell, you know, Stubby or whoever's hitting me ground balls, hit them wherever, you know, let me just react and let me just, you know, try to make a play on it and move my feet the right way. And I always think that's the most important because uh, when the games start, I just want my instincts to take over. You know, I've always been that way. I never want to, you know, I, I am trying to think about, you know, hey, what could happen here if the ball's hit to me, turn the double play or go to first or whatever. But at the same time, I just want my instincts to just see the ball, go for it and make my play. And now that, now that was one of the questions that I was going to ask you, you know, what is it that you're thinking? Because as I've gotten out of the game, you know, I have a lot of time to sit down and think now because people just ask me, well, you know, what were you thinking? And, and I find myself saying that, you know, I'm not really thinking. I want to operate in my subconscious mind yeah. so that it, the instincts are working more than, than anything. Sure, yeah, you think about it beforehand, you know, who's running, what the play is, where I'm going with the ball, this, that, and the other. But when the play happens, it just happens, you know, and, and it's instincts. And that comes from all of the work, the hard work and stuff that you put in long before, um, long before the, the lights come on. That's right. All right. Walk me through the process. I'm stepping in the batter's box. I'm a right-handed hitter. I'm stepping in the batter's oh, box. Oh, you're, you're bunting, Clayboy. Yeah, 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 he's slow. Hey, you're trying to jag over on one day. He's slow. No, no, I'm going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> he's slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might just put my hip into it and get hit by a pitch. I'm what do you got? No, walk me through the process of when that guy steps in the box, what, what's the first thing you want to do in order to be prepared for the first pitch that comes to you? Yeah, well, it all depends on who the hitter is. Um, and honestly, I like to, you know, I'll watch Wilson now. You know, I like to, I used to watch Yachty. Yachty's moving in a little bit. Hey, you know, you start to creep towards the line maybe a little bit or 
you know, nowadays there's so many analytics, so they kind of tell you where to play. But, you know, you know, sometimes me and Stubby, you know, we have a great relationship. But sometimes I look at him and I'll just be like, I got it. Like, I, I know, like, I know this guy. I've seen him a lot. I've seen, I've gotten a lot of balls hit to me. I think it's just experience of knowing who the hitter is. That's kind of how I've always been. Yeah. No, that, it, that's exactly it. You know, you go over your scouting report, so you have an idea. And when you play for 15, 20 years, you have a pretty good idea where the guy is. And I didn't like being told where to, where to play because I didn't have to be playing a certain way. My job is to make sure that if he makes a mistake, I'm able to cover that mistake. And that doesn't necessarily mean I'm standing in a certain, in a, in a certain position. So it's, it's all of that stuff that you think about long before uh, that guy steps into the, in the batter's box. When he gets into that batter's box, you already, you already have a pretty good idea of what, what it is he's capable of doing and where, he, where he's gonna hit the ball. You ever hear a story about him in a scouting report? No. So scouting reports were kind of a big deal in the 80s. Game one of the World Series, 82 World Series, everybody read the scouting report and Milwaukee hit it where they worked. Yeah. To the point where he came in, tore the scouting report, never looked at another, <laughs> another one. Scouting report. I said, let's do what we do. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and it gets back to that instinct thing. You know, if you've played long enough and you're a professional at your craft, then you come to the ballpark prepared and ready to play every day. And that started long. Be that starts long before you get to the ballpark. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think another thing is too is obviously, obviously, he knows his range, man. He's got a lot of range, and I believe I have. I, I trust my range also. I know I got a lot of it also. But it, there's a lot of work that you know I put a lot of work in, so I know that I can cover a lot of ground. So I trust the fact that hey, I can get to any ball. You know, if they hit a bullet, you know, they deserve a hit. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes they deserve it, but I really do have confidence in my range. And let me say this, Mike. I think that when you have a player that has his ability, that has the ability to go to his right, as he does, when, you're, when, when, you're, when your glove hand is your, your, your left hand is your glove hand, you know, that's always your, always your strength. But when you have a third baseman or first baseman who can, who can go the opposite way, it makes it a lot easier on everybody else because now I can play further to my left, second baseman can play further to his left. So having a guy like him at third base makes life a lot easier for the, for the, for the whole infield. You talk about the play you made in San Diego. What other plays stand out for you that when you look back and you see the video of what you did that particular night, is there one that stands out for you? Oh, man. Um, I can think of one last man, year. Tampa? Probably the one, the diving down the third base line, throw from the knees home, yeah, yeah. Um, and Yachty uh, made the great tag. Or I don't know if it was Kiz. I think it was Kiz, actually, uh, made a great tag. That was my, one of my favorite ones. Um, and a lot of them, honestly, a lot of my favorite plays are like double plays, you know, like big double plays that you didn't expect we, us to the turn, that we end up turning, you know, stuff like that. That's really important, and it, it helps the team the most is make turning those double plays that, you know, they think they get a hit through, but you make a diving play and you make a backhand or something, you know. Two outs is better than one, so anything yeah, to do with double play. That's right. It's always keeping yourself in a position yeah. to keep a double play in order. Yeah, that's, right. that's very, very important, and especially for a staff. Yeah. I was thinking of the game in Tampa. Yeah, when yeah. You charge, you charge the ball, pivoted, and threw back to third base. Yeah, yeah. And, and one of the things I learned about both you guys, the guys who you play with always need to be alert. Yeah. If you're standing near a base, you better be ready to defend it because the ball might be coming to you when you wouldn't think it would. Yeah. And that's something I'm sure. How, how big is communication, or do guys play long enough with you guys to know I better be ready because this guy can get it to me any way he can? For sure. I mean, I think in 21, my first year here, I think I tried to make some throws that – Sometimes, like, Paulie didn't expect me to make, and the guy would beat it out. And that's not on Paulie. That's probably just more that we didn't communicate before that, hey, that I'm, I'm going to try. I'm, I'm not afraid to try these different things. You know, I'm always going for the lead out. You know, I'm going to do everything I can to get that lead out. If we don't turn the double play, that's fine. But as long as that man's not on second base, that's all that matters to me from a defensive standpoint. Um, because if the guy gets a base hit, like, it feels good knowing that, all right, that guy's not scoring. Now it's first and second instead of, you know, an RBI. Um, but it's always, for me, it's always getting the lead out. And I want to get there as quick as possible um, and then let the shortstop and second baseman do the rest. But now that we, you know, the great thing about our team, and I'm guessing when you were playing, we have a great defensive team. I think we have the best defensive team in baseball. It's not even close. And so these guys expect the ball and they want the ball, and that's always good to have. They always say, you show me a good infield and I'll show you a good first baseman as well. You guys have played with two incredible first basemen in your careers. Yeah. And watching what you and Paul Goldschmidt have working, yeah watching what you and Keith Hernandez had working and some other guys you play with, that, that's really make, what makes it fun. When you have a guy over there that you have confidence in at knowing when to come off the bag, when to stay on the bag, or have an idea of what, you know, how you, you know, what your throw is going to do, it makes life a, a lot easier for everybody, you know, because there's no hesitation 
and getting rid of the ball. And, it, and playing on turf, you know, we had, it was, everything was sped up. Everything was fast, you know, so you didn't have a whole lot of time to, to think about it. And playing with Keith Hernandez, I think the greatest thing of the pressure that he took off of everybody, and especially pitching, he could play from first base to the, to the third base line, which takes the pitcher out of the, the play completely. Yeah. And when you can take the pitcher out of the play, now you're just operating with, with, with uh, your third baseman and your catcher, it's easy. Yeah, I mean, and for me with Goldie, um, you know, it, it's he said he's a big target. Not only is he a big target, you know, like you said, you get it, you get rid of it quick. And sometimes when you get rid of it quick, you can't, you know, you don't get enough on it. Sometimes it's a short hop or whatever. But you just know that if you get in in that vicinity where he's at, he's gonna make a play on it. It's just a lot of confidence, and it just makes you, for us, more willing to try different things because we know that we have somebody over there that can pick us up. All right, you sitting next to a Hall of Famer, pick his brain. <laughs> well. I mean, I guess one thing I would ask, um, <clears throat> now that I'm getting older, and uh, I thought, like, you know, did you used to cut back on ground balls, or did we, as you got older, were you always taking a bunch of ground balls? I always take. I, I, I loved it. Yeah. You know, it was, um, it, was, uh, it was really relaxing for me sometimes to be able to come out and take ground balls. So it was one of the things that, as a kid growing up, I loved playing, sitting around and throwing the ball against the wall, playing, with, playing by myself, you know? Yeah. And, and so that was always a part of what I did. I took ground balls because I never wanted to be surprised by anything that happened on the field. And when I was playing on turf, I always wanted to know where the bad hops were yeah. so that I could anticipate that ball taking a hop. So yeah. I took ground balls every day. I tried to take at least 100 ground balls every day. And yeah. um, it's, it's what made me feel that I was ready to go out there and play. Yeah. You hear that, man? I can't stop taking ground balls. Yeah, he's, not taking, he's not stopping. You, you then. I can't stop. Like yeah, 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 I gotta keep going. going. I gotta keep going. Oz, what about you? I know you want to ask this guy something. Well, you know, the biggest question I think was that what what he was thinking. You know, uh, because that was the question that's always posed to me. And a lot of times, I just, I just said, hey, you know, I don't, I don't even know if I was thinking as much as I was operating in my subconscious mind, yeah. just from an instinctual standpoint. And, and, and I was good at that because I had taken so many ground balls. You know, I had taken pride in, 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 in the, the time that I spent out there on the field, fielding ground balls and stuff. And so it was, it, it, I'm not gonna say it was easy because it's never easy. It, it's never easy, but um, it was, it, it, it made me comfortable in, in, in my being knowing that I had prepared myself. I was prepared. I was never not prepared for whatever came that particular day. Yeah, yeah I mean, like you said, I think like we talked about, it's like you, you, you work on it, you do it. And when you make an error, you know, I would never blame the field, right? I would always blame myself. Like, I, I didn't, Wait, you know, you I didn't, didn't look at your glove. And yeah, yeah, I, 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 no, I try not to be that guy that looks at my glove like, what the heck just happened? You know, I try to take ownership. Hey, I didn't move my feet right. You know, I didn't get on top of the throw. I didn't follow the throw. I threw like this, you know, those are things that I feel like when I make errors, I think it's, you know, I always know it's my fault. You know, I always put it on me because like you said, we prepare, I'm prepared for a lot of these hops, these plays that I believe I should be making. So when I don't, you know, I always say, you know, I got to take ownership. Like I was ready I just, or I, I got lazy or lazy feet. You know, sometimes you get caught off guard or, you know, it's just constantly like trying to remind yourself to stay ready. You know, one of the things that we, we see in the game is there's so much video and you guys watch so many people play. What's a common mistake that you see fielders make that maybe separates themselves from being a regular to being a perennial? He just talked about it, you know, um, keeping yourself in a position to be able to make a play. And, and I think that most people think that when you get in a slump, it's always offense. You can get in a defensive slump too, and you get in a defensive slump because you're laying back on the ball. And I always say, or always tell myself, when you start feeling like you're, you're out of sync, be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Go get it. Go get it. Don't let the ball play you. And so even playing on AstroTurf as fast as it was, I was always talk, telling myself, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Yeah, I think uh, just like that. I mean, <clears throat> for me, it's just being aggressive for the ball. And, you know, it, and it's just like hitting like he said. You know, if I work on my hitting and I go in that game, I know I'm ready to go. I'm prepared. I'm confident because I, I put in the work. It's just the same thing with fielding. When a game starts, I'm, I'm confident. I'm ready to go. I want the ball hit to me. You know, when you don't want the ball, that's when it finds you. That's how the Bay game's always high. It's always been that way. So, you know, I want to be, I want to be ready, and I want the ball, and uh, you know, I want to make the play. You know what I mean? I want to be the best fielder on the field. You know, I just, you know, I, I try to take pride like that. Yeah, you want to be that guy that your pitching staff says when you're, when we're standing around in a huddle saying, "Hey, hit the ball to Ozzy," or you want yeah. your teammates, or hit the ball to, hit the ball to Arenado. Yeah. You know, you want to be that guy, and I think that wanting it. It, it gives you that confidence that, hey, you know, um, 
I got th these guys. I don't want to let these guys down, you know. So, hey, it, it, it makes you eager to, to be in that, keep yourself in that position. When it comes to fielding, you guys have the ultimate sixth sense. You know, most people can't do what you all do. Over the course of time, have you ever surprised yourself by a play you made and maybe you go back and see it later and you kind of shake your head because not even you thought you could make a, make a play like that until you saw it? There's been a couple of times where I'd be like, wow, man, I, you know, I was surprised I made it and then Goldie made a good scoop. But, uh, you know, to be honest, like, I, uh, I really believe I can make every play I go for, you know, and that's why I go for them is that, you know, and sometimes I probably shouldn't and sometimes I probably should hold the throw, but I just feel like I can make it, you know, and, uh, and there's some times where I make some bad throws where the runner goes a second and I'm like, man, I probably should have held it. But that's that internal clock that I feel like I can make every single play. And I believe that's what made me who I am. And I can't change that. Yeah, I never thought that, hey, uh, you know, um, I should, shouldn't have tried that. You know, I do it because that's what I feel is right at that particular time. And you, and you go for it. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Either one of you all have a superstition. <laughs> Don't well. I try not to step on any lines or anything, you know, all, all of that. But uh, my go-to food when when I needed a when I was in a slump, a the, yeah, was hamburger helper. You know, <laughs> <laughs> love me some hamburger yeah. helper. Um, I try to keep you know the same routine every day. I really do. I you know I'll use the same bat. Obviously, I use the same fielding glove. But uh, you know, the one I guess one superstition that I have is that every glove that I use in batting practice throughout the whole year is the glove I'm going to use the following year. I've been doing it my whole career. How many gloves do you go through a year? I try to use one. I try to use one, but uh, you know, uh, I'll be honest with you. If I could put a glove in and I could be like, there's, there's no chance I can use this in a game. I could tell right away. You know, I put it in. I'm like, nope, nah, I'm not bothering with this one. You know, this, I could just have that feeling. You know, it has to feel right. But uh, one or two. Yeah. Okay. I you know, and I and I ask that question because. When, when people ask me how many gloves I go through a year, it depends on how hot it is, yeah, you yeah. know, because it's such a feel thing. And sometimes it can get sweat logged, get a little, get, get a little heavy. Yeah. And that's one of those instinctual things that you just feel. And like you said, yeah. you know, you can, when you put it on, you know it, it doesn't feel right. You yeah. know, that's not going to work. So, you know, you go to, the, go to the other one. How many back, you keep a backup? Yeah, oh yeah. Well, kind I of got two backup. or three backups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, your first Little League glove, remember? Yeah, I do. Yeah. What was it? It was what I think it was one of those gloves. It was an Ozzy Smith special. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those. I think, I think mine said Derek Jeter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it said Derek Jeter in the inside of it. So well, it, it didn't pretty... say Enzo Hernandez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> what about you? Uh, my first one was an old Stan Musial. Um, it had Stan Musial's name in there, and um, it was well, my first glove was a brown paper bag that I rolled down <laughs> on my wrist, you know, that I used with a tennis ball. Yeah. And really that's how I, I kind of started um, continuing to develop my hand and eye coordination by using a, a brown paper bag and a, and a, and a tennis ball. Any non-baseball activities you do to help your game? Video games, hand, eye coordination. You remember when Pac-Man first yeah. came out, somebody asked Ozzy in the World Series, do, does playing video games help you with your hand, eye coordination? And Ozzy kind of had that look on his face. What's, what's a video game? Yeah, because right? it was so new. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I feel like uh, I don't. I wouldn't say. I, you know, the one thing we used to do a lot. We used to play a lot of ping pong. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of ping pong. You know, that, and that's a lot of hand-eye coordination and trying to be as fast as you can with your hands. I don't know if that necessarily made me a better fielder, but for sure, I think uh, you know all those things. But there's one thing I do is that if somebody throws me a drink or whatever, I always try to catch it with my left hand. I don't even try to catch it with my right and you catch for some so reason. The ice doesn't yeah, yeah, right, yeah, no. But I always try to catch it with my left hand because that's my glove hand. I'm like, I need, you know, I can't catch it with my right. I never, I gotta make sure, you know, I'm catching everything with my left hand. So I don't know. I always think like that. So I, I, I never want to be surprised. So I keep them both ready. You know, you know what I mean. You never know when you gotta use the other. Yeah, you're right. Hop. right yeah, 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 bad, yeah. bad hop. Yeah, yeah. All right. Before we get out of here, Hall of Famer, give this young fella some advice or maybe the advice somebody gave you when you first broke in? Hey, man, I, I tell you, you know, in watching him go about his craft, I know that he loves the process. And if you love the process like you do, you get the results that, you're, that he's getting. You know, and there's nothing for me to tell him. The only thing I can do is mess him up. Yeah, Just continue to do what you're doing. I appreciate and, it. And it, it's, it's going to be a wonderful career. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say Hall of Fame. I don't want to say that. But... You're a great player as is. You're fun to watch, and uh, I enjoy it. No, I appreciate you. Two Cardinals. Doesn't Thank get you. any better than that. Thank appreciate you, fellas. It. Thank you.